Hello everyone, this is Overboy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 1982 movie, The Dark Crystal. The movie is directed by Jim Henson and uh, Frank Gauze, um, and the story was written by Jim Henson, and uh, the screen, it was the screenwriter was David O'Dell. Um, they uh, worked on Labyrinth together again later. Um, the story is set on the planet Thrall, which, uh, like a thousand years before the movie takes place, this crystal is cracked, and it created two species, um, the Skeksis, which are these evil vulture-like creatures, and the Mystics, who are these good wizard-type creatures. Um, when one of the uh, Mystics is about to die, he tells this young Gelfling uh, named Jin he's going to have to go on a journey to find uh, this shard of the crystal of the crystal to repair the dark crystal and bring peace back to the planet and everything. So uh, Jin sets out on a journey to. Uh, return the crystal to where it needs to be and everything. And along the way he meets another Gelfling named Kira. They had both thought that they were the only ones left of their species and everything. They form a friendship and she has this dog, this little thing that's like a dog. It, it, it's not really a dog but it looks like, kind of looks like, or kind of remind you when it barks and stuff like a dog. It's called Fizz Gig. It's a pretty cute little creature and everything um, and uh, also he meets this um, oracle named Agra who is one that is where he gets the crystal from and everything and the Skeksis capture her but, um, but yeah pretty much the movie is just them trying to get to take this crystal back and everything and restore peace to the, the planet um, but it, it's a pretty good movie it's pretty fast paced for the most part the first 20 minutes of it is a little bit slow uh, but it kind of shows you kind of what's going on with the, the mystics and the Skeksis and everything uh, but once Jen starts the journey it, it it picks up and goes really fast um, but um, the voice cast was really good um, Stephen uh, Garlick does the voice of Jen and he's really good and Lisa Maxwell was really good as Kira and Billy White Whitelaw is really good as Agra um, there's also a lot of other uh, characters and stuff a lot of more voiced by the puppeteers that, uh, and stuff. Jim Henson does the voice of some of the characters, and uh, Frank Oz, of course, does. He, and he's, I think Frank Oz even was the one that make, does the, the sounds and stuff for Fizz Gig. But the, the cast is just real, the, the cast works really good and everything. But the thing that makes this movie so amazing is the way that it was made. It's made with nothing but practical effects. There's not really that there are humans in this, but there a lot of them are either um, in costume. Most of them are just like in costumes and stuff. And but most of the stuff is just made using puppets and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's just one of the best movies with the uh, really really great practical effects and everything. It has some really good cinematography and the score is done by Trevor Jones who would later go on to do the score for Labyrinth. Um, and I just really, really like the way this movie was made. The special effects are, are just really amazing. Some of the best special effects. I, I honestly think this stuff looks better than any 
the thing we get nowadays, except for maybe maybe the Star Wars movies, because those use mostly practical effects now. But um, I mean, there are movies that use nothing but practical, and those are the ones that look the best nowadays. To see. CGI just usually doesn't look that good. Some every once in a while it will, but this movie would not be the same if it used CGI and everything. It would, it would be, it would look absolutely terrible, probably. Of course, if it did, it would be pretty much just be an animated movie. But I, I just love the way this movie looks, and the the story is really good, and everything. The characters are really well done. They make you care about them and stuff. Um, and everything. I don't really have a lot to complain about this movie. It's been one of my favorites since I was a kid. I, although I haven't seen it in a long, long time. The last time I saw it, I was like maybe nine years old or something like that, which was like in 2001 or 2002. I think it was like 2001 because I think the last time I watched this movie was right around the time Monsters Inc. was hitting theaters. And everything, but I remember watching this movie in it a lot as a kid. Went back in those times, and I wore myself out on it. So I, uh, but I never owned it. I always borrowed my friend's copy of it, or I would watch it at their house. And um, but um, I recently got this one on DVD and. Uh, I really do like this movie a lot. It's just really, really great 80s classic and everything. They don't make movies like this anymore. <laughs> I know there's supposed to be a 10-part uh, miniseries prequel on Netflix uh, sometime in the next, I'm guessing, year or two. They announced it a few years ago, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing that because they're bringing back all the practical effects there's not gonna the only, from what I read the only CGI they're using is just the CGI that'll take the puppeteers out of the movie where you won't have to see them which I think is really cool um, but it's just uh, gonna be it's gonna be a really great show I'm sure and everything I can't wait to see it it's gonna be interesting to see what this world was like before the movie before the setting of the movie and I can't wait to see that but um, I'd always wish that we would have gotten a sequel to it but I don't re watching it tonight I don't know what a sequel could have done I don't know how they could have really continued the story and everything and made it where made a good enough story so it's probably a good thing that they left it left it alone and everything and but I am excited for the prequel though it's probably going to be easier to go back and tell something tell a story about something that happened before this movie instead of after um, there's there's a lot of really really cool things about this movie uh, I do like Labyrinth uh, a little bit more than this one but it's just a really good movie it, I'm a sucker for the 80s fantasy movies and stuff like that I love the all the movies like this one and uh, Never Ending Story and stuff like that that have really really awesome practical effects and everything out and are fun adventures and stuff like that uh, we don't really get movies like that as much now like we used to but um, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10 because it, it, it's a really good movie. Like I said, the first 20 minutes of it's a little bit slow. That's, that's my biggest complaint and everything. I mean, everything else uh, I can't really complain on. The storytelling was good. The pacing was good for the most part except for, like I said, the first 20 minutes is a little slow but it's not enough to make the movie bad or anything. Um, I mean, the voice acting was great. And everything so I, I just really like the way this movie was done everything but um, anyway um, that's my review for the dark crystal it's it's a really good movie if you haven't seen it I would definitely recommend checking it out because it's a it's a classic and 
and everything. If you're a fan of the Jim Henson's Muppets and stuff like that, I'm sure you'll probably like this one. Although this is way, way darker than most of the, the, the Muppets and uh, all of that, but um, I'd like to give a shout out to um, the people at um, the YouTube channel Crap My Dad Makes Me Watch. Um, they're the ones that recommended me to do this video. I want to say thank you for recommending me to do this and um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I hope that you like it and feel free to like and subscribe and um, you can follow me on Facebook at Ogreboy1992 and thank you and have a good night.